For the past 10 years, I've just been using this basic office chair from Staples, and I think it cost around £70 in 2011. So it's starting to get quite old, and with working from home more often, my back's starting to hurt, and I think it's just because it's not particularly supportive. And then over time, the foam sank down a little bit and it's not nearly as supportive as it used to be. And while it's a sort of quite a comfortable chair in the sense of just conventional comfort, it doesn't really support my back and I really feel it afterwards. So I decided while I'm working from home a lot more and actually using my desk a fair bit, I'd finally upgrade and get a better chair. So I was looking at all different options on the market and the one that kept coming out top when anyone was talking about decent chairs was the Herman Miller Aeron. And it's been a very popular chair for a very long time. I mean, it came out in, what, 1994? And it's a really popular, well-regarded chair. And I don't mind paying a lot of money for a good chair if it's going to last me another 10 years. But I knew they're about £1,100, and that's quite a lot of money. So I took a look around on the used market because that's quite popular for them. And while seeing a few on eBay, most of them were collection only. And likewise, the ones on Gumtree were collection only. And that's not really possible with the current COVID restrictions. So I went on looking for ones that I could get online and I could get delivered. There was a couple on eBay, but the descriptions were a bit vague. And the thing with the Aeron, there's lots of different types and features you can get on them. But I came across a website called secondhand.com or secondhand.com and they had one for 4 dollars refurbished. So I thought, I'll get that and see what it's like. The reviews were very mixed on Trustpilot. Some people were saying, oh, it's great. Some people were saying it was terrible or more just like it was a disaster in two cages. So I thought I'd take the plunge and get one, and then now it's arrived, I thought I'd do a video of it, just to really show my review of the chair itself and just what I got for my money, because the description was a little bit vague as well. So what we'll do now is we'll quickly take a look at the listing that I bought, just to see what the website actually said, and then we'll unwrap it on camera and see what actually turned up. Okay, so now let's take a quick look at what I've ordered. So this is the particular listing I've ordered. They've got lots of other listings on here, but this was the only one that had stock. And as we can see, it's the Herman Miller Aeron size B. Now, one thing to bear in mind with the Aeron is there's two versions. There's the original Aeron, which was later referred to as the Aeron Classic, and they no longer sell that. And then there's the Aeron Remastered that launched in 2016. So in 2016, they launched the Remastered, kept the older one as the Aeron Classic until 2018, and then they discontinued it. This is obviously the Aeron Classic, it's the older one. The Aeron Remastered has a few improvements, we'll talk about some of them later, and it's a slightly different design, and it does look a lot nicer or a little bit nicer, but it's a lot more expensive. It costs well over £1,000 new, and even to get them used, you're still looking around about 800 900 So it's something I might get a few years in the future if I can find a particularly good deal at some point, but this seemed like a more sensible option for now. So yeah, it's the original Aeron, and it's size B. That's something to bear in mind, is the Aeron's actually available in three different sizes, A, B and C. B is a sort of middle one that fits most people and I'm about sort of six foot tall and I kind of fit very much into the B category. The C is much larger and the A is a lot smaller. If you go on the Herman Miller website there is a comparison chart but if you're looking at the second hand market most of them will be size B just because that's generally what you would use if you're say kitting out an office with a lot of chairs for lots of different people you would generally go for the B. And as we can see here it is 499 so that price is higher than you could probably find it for. I could almost certainly find this on eBay or Gumtree a lot cheaper, or at least a little bit cheaper, maybe about 300, 400. But with this, I'm getting it refurbished, so hopefully that means it'll be good condition, we'll see. I'm also getting it delivered, which is something that's quite hard to do from eBay. Lots of places, don't, people don't deliver it. And it just gives me a bit of peace of mind. I'm getting some sort of warranty, so 499, including delivery, isn't too bad. Obviously, I'm not affiliated at all with this website, but I thought, I'll just take a look at what I've ordered. Now, what I'm a bit curious about with this is in terms of the features, because Aeron's are available with lots of different configurations, and when you order them, you can pick different c configurations and pay extra for certain features. And this listing does show most of them, but it's a little bit vague. For example, it says it, ha it, says it has full height adjustable arms. That's good, because that, that's an additional feature. Standard arm pads, I think, because you could optionally get leather ones, but standard's fine. Adjustable lumbar, that's fine, but if you, you can see in the photo, that's, a, that's the basic lumbar support. It's not the posture fit, which is like an extra lumbar support feature that they sold separately. It's got the classic weave seat, that's fine, that's normal. Graphite base, normal. Where it gets confusing is in terms of the, the features for tilting. Because on Aeron, you've got three different main versions for that. You've got the most basic one that has no 
like locking levers for tilting, it will just always tilt back. Then you get the one that has tilt lock, which is where it tilts back and it, you can set a position that it will stop at so it doesn't tilt back indefinitely. It can lock at different positions or you can lock it totally upright. And that's an optional extra. And likewise, there's also a feature called forward tilt where when you tilt the chair forward, when you lean forwards, the chair comes forward slightly and it comes forward a bit more than being vertical. So it's good if you're leaning over a desk and that's called forward tilt. And again, that's an extra. In the listing, all this shows is back tilt, which I pr I'm assuming means back tilt lock and not just as it tilts backwards because they all do that and that's like advertising it has wheels. So hopefully back tilt means it's got the back tilt lock, but obviously that could be a bit vague. But also interestingly, it doesn't specify forward tilt anywhere in the description here at all, despite that being a feature you probably want to advertise. However, if you look up in the URL, it actually does state Hammer Miller Aeron chair size B with forward tilt. But it doesn't show up here, so I don't know, you know, is that something where they've it has had it and then they've changed the listing to remove it but it's not updated the URL somewhere. I don't know. So it'll be interesting to see. But likewise, if we look at the pictures, again, the pictures probably aren't the most accurate thing in the world. But if we look here, I, I think I can only actually see one lever in the picture here rather than two. So, yeah, it might, it's almost certainly got the backwards tilt because you wouldn't list back tilt if it didn't have the backwards tilt lock. That would just be bizarre because they all have that but I'm not sure about forward tilt because it states forward tilt in the URL but not down here I don't really know um so we'll see what we get <laughs> I might, might, might have forward tilt it might not so we'll, we'll take a look so now here we have the chair as it was delivered and yes I said as it was delivered it was delivered like this because it wasn't actually sent through like a normal courier it was actually delivered buy second hand themselves in like a company branded van which was quite surprising and yeah it turned up and for me it didn't take really too long I ordered it on a Tuesday and it arrived the following Monday which isn't too bad but I would say that's something to bear in mind with this because I looked at the reviews on Trustpilot and some people were saying it took ages some people were saying it was really quick and I think I got it quite quickly on their website it states that delivery takes five to ten days or ten, five to ten working days However, after ordering, like immediately after ordering, I emailed them just to ask, do they have any rough idea when it'll turn up, just so I know when to expect it. And they came back to me saying, we aim to dispatch in 10 to 14 working days as chairs are refurbished to order. And then they said that, in the, that the 5 to 10 days would be in addition to that. So it could potentially take 10 to 14 days to actually refurbish the chair to order. And then it could take an additional 5 to 10 days to turn up. Now, for me, that actually didn't happen. It turned up in under a week. But it is just important to bear that in mind that it could take a long time and based on their delivery guarantees, you might be waiting a while. I also don't know how much that is due to location because they were delivering it in their own van. Their warehouse, they've got one warehouse in Scotland just west of Glasgow, which isn't too far from me. And they've got one near London. So I suspect maybe, I don't know how, how they would deliver it if you're quite far from one of the warehouses. Because if you were a few hundred miles from, each, miles from each warehouse, I don't know how long delivery would take then or how that would be worked out. So that's just worth bearing in mind that the delivery might take a little while. But for me, it was under a week, which was pretty good. So we've got the chair here wrapped up. Now let's unwrap it and see what I actually got. Did I get all the features it mentioned? Did I get any features that it vaguely mentioned in, in the URL, but didn't say in the description? Let's see. So let's unwrap it. So it's just wrapped in plastic, nothing at all special. And let's unwrap it. Okay, so here are the chairs, let's take a look. So, first of all, looking at it, it seems really good condition. Looks really clean. And yeah. Now, the one thing I have immediately noticed is that this is unfortunately an older model. When I say that, it's not an older model in the sense that it's, it's like lacking features. But with these adjustments for the arms, it has these rotary knobs on it. Now, those are apparently pre-2005. Post-2005, they replaced these with like flip clips that flip up and you unclip the arm, adjust the height and then clip it down to lock it. This one has the rotary arm, so it means it's quite old. Now, that's a little bit annoying because the picture on the website did show 
the clips. But I imagine that's just a case of just, they've got a lot of different chairs there and some will have the clips, some will have the rotary arms. So it does mean it's a pre-2005 model, which is fairly old, but if it's good condition and it's got a warranty, then really can't complain too much. So let's see, see what else we've got. So as, as it's mentioned in the listing, you've just got the standard lumbar support. There's no posture fit on this one, but that's fine. You can add that later. And then looking around this side, that's really good. We have both forward tilt and tilt lock. We can see that down here with these two levers. So the front one is apparently forward tilt and the rear one is tilt lock. And these are those optional features that some of the chairs have and some don't. This one did mention it had back tilt, so that was a good sign, but did that mean it had tilt lock or did it mean it just tilted backwards? But it confirmed this one does have tilt lock. And likewise, it's got the forward tilt, which is where the chair can tilt slightly forwards when you lean forwards from it, which it only mentioned in the URL. So it's really good to see it has both of these. Now, of course, that does that could vary. I'm not able to say for sure if every chair bought from that listing will have these features because it is still very vague, but it's good to see that mine has that. Then around the other side, you've just got the standard controls you would always have, so you've got the height adjust and the rotary tension adjust. And we'll try all these out later. And then as for the arms, they seem to be the correct ones, as in that they're fully adjustable, so they're height adjustable, and they also do have that rotation adjustment there as well, which is the all the adjustments available on the arms on these chairs. So what I'll now do is I'll go off camera, I'll do a full inspection of it really closely, and I'll come back and I'll talk about sort of any issues I find or what I think of the overall condition. Okay, so I've just gone around and looked at the overall condition of it. And to be honest, it actually seems really quite impressive. When I first got up close to it after taking the plastic off, the first thing that hit me was the smell and that it's clearly been cleaned with some sort of proper cleaner or disinfectant type stuff. So it doesn't have any weird smells, it has definitely been properly cleaned. And in terms of cleanliness, it's really pretty good. Anywhere I'd expect dust to collect, like maybe down here, it seems totally clean. There's maybe a couple of little bits of fluff caught in the mesh down here that I can get out, but apart from like a yeah, minor little bit of fluff on it, it's definitely really clean. And that's kind of a good thing with this, because obviously I was paying for a refurbished chair and I was potentially paying a slight premium over cheaper ones from eBay, but it has definitely been cleaned properly and disinfected. It's not like something that's come out of a dump or out of an office that's just filthy. It does seem to have been cleaned really well. Then the overall condition is pretty decent and actually, actually really good come to think of it. Especially when I think of the age of this being pre-2005. Because if we look around it, there's like some obviously some slight scuffs on the arms, which you'll always get because these bash on, bash on desks and get caught on the other side of desks when people move it. So there's some like fairly reasonable scuffs on this arm here, but nothing, you don't feel them, it's just purely cosmetic. And then same on this side, there's some slight wear, but nothing bad at all. I wonder if I might even be able to fix that with like, even like shoe polish might work. I don't know if that would come off of my arm though, so I don't might not want to risk that, but yeah, it's, it, there's like minor little scratches on the arms, but really nothing major at all. Likewise, the only other damage I could really at all see is up here, there's a little scuff on it. Now, that's a little bit annoying. That's the only one that bit I've actually seen that's noticeable. There's a little scuff there and a little scuff along the top here, but it's not bad at all. It's clearly the sort of damage you'd get from just pushing it into a desk and hitting that off the desk. But it's not bad at all. And to be fair, I could probably just, I might even be able to like put some sort of ink or paint or, you know, it's probably quite easy to hide that. It doesn't look bad at all. The only area where there's really any sort of reasonable marks is just on the base and on the wheels. But that's to be expected because this is the sort of thing that gets pushed around. People's feet are going to be hitting off this. So yeah, there is definitely scratches on here quite reasonably. And the wheels are definitely obviously a little bit scuffed up from running across floor for years, but realistically, it's not bad at all. And in fact, looking at the condition of this, it really is a testament to the build quality of this chair, because we've already established this as pre-2005 based on the arms. And in my old chair, it's from 2011. But looking at the damage on my old chair compared to this chair, just the sort of wear and tear, the old chair has more than this, despite this being older. And additionally, if you think about it, that old chair I bought brand new and I've only ever used it at home myself. So it's it's seen obviously reasonable use, but it's only been seen used by one person who's generally fairly careful with it. Whereas this has probably come from an office given the company seem to do office clearance type stuff. 
So it's clearly come from an office where it's probably had a very heavy life being used every day by lots of different people being bashed around and all this sort of stuff. So the fact that it's in this good condition, in fact, better condition than my, my newer previous chair, is really a testament to the build quality because this has probably seen a much harder life than my old chair, yet it's actually in better condition. So definitely very happy with the condition of it. So what I'll now do is I'll go and do a quick tour of the chair just to show all the features it has in more detail and I'll go away and try it out for a while and come back with my feedback. So now let's go around and take a tour of it. So up here at the top you've got this mesh, that's obviously very characteristic of the Aeron is it's this mesh material, which feels really good, it's very comfortable and it doesn't seem to have worn out at all. There's not a single defect on this mesh that I can see and it still feels perfectly supportive so it's not like it's sagged down over the years which is really good. I have noticed that the seat pan does wobble quite a bit, but I googled this and apparently that's normal. It's meant to do that. It's a bit. I think it's been given the mechanism, so that rattle is apparently normal according to various forums about these chairs. But yeah, it seems really good. So we'll do a quick tour and just show the sort of features and adjustments it has. So the first thing we've got is these arms. These are the fully adjustable arms. So as I mentioned, they've already got that three-position angle there, and then you can adjust the height using this knob here. Obviously the newer ones have that flip clip, this just has a knob. So what you do is you turn it up on this side apparently, like that to loosen the arm off. Then you can slide it and then you twist it the other way to lock it in place. And that works pretty well. The clip would definitely be easier because that's a little bit fiddly, especially if you're sitting in it, but it's not too bad at all. You then got this lumbar, lumbar support on the back. This is quite nice. You can like lift it, slide it up and down to position it where you need it. You can also lift it out entirely if you don't want it. And if you look at it, it's got two different si sizes. So this side bulges out more, this side bulges out less. So you can take it out, flip it around and put the side that bulges out more in to get more support if you want it. So that's pretty nice. There is the optional posture fit system that you can fit on. It's got more of a sort of a knob that adjusts it and it pushes you in and out and it's a bit more, a bit easier to use and potentially a bit better. So I might look at getting that in the future, but it's about £100 to buy and add on, but that is another option you can add. Around this side you've got the controls. So here you've got the tilt lock and the forward tilt. I'll demonstrate this properly afterwards once I've used it for a while. We've got the two levers there. And it's good to see those because, as I mentioned, those are optional extras. So it would be com quite common to get a chair that's got the tilt lock but not forward tilt, or one that's got neither of these which means it won't forward tilt and it'll just always tilt back when you lean back. It won't have an ability to lock that in different positions. Then finally, if you look on the other side, you'll see we've got the standard switch to adjust the height. That's very standard. And you've got this, which adjusts the, the tension for tilting the back. And that's quite cool with this is actually having that on the side of the chair rather than on the bottom. Because most chairs have something like that, but it's always under the bottom here. And you've got to basically get off the chair to adjust it. Or you've got to try and reach down awkwardly and try and do it and it's really fiddly. Whereas this here is very in a very good position, so you can sit on it and turn this while feeling exactly what the tension's like, which is really good. And yeah, it seems really good. Now that'll just lift up there, and yeah. The other thing that's worth mentioning is just the materials this is made out of. Any other chair I've really had before has mostly been plastic. It'll maybe have, it'll also have a metal cylinder and probably a metal undercarriage that contains all the mechanism but the bit for the wheels will be plastic, most of the back will be plastic, sometimes the arms will be plastic. Whereas with this, yes, this back here, the surround is plastic, but these bars here are metal, the arms are metal, this piece here is metal, as is the whole mechanism for like hinging it. Then there's another bar under here, it's also part of the hinge mechanism, that's metal, and the whole base down here is also metal. So it does weigh an absolute ton, but wow that feels well made so even though this is really old i suspect this is going to last a very long time just because of the sheer materials it's made out of just feel really good quality there shouldn't be any issues with bits of plastic snapping off over the years which is really good and the other thing with this is that parts are widely available it's not like most office chairs like my old one where the gas cylinder is going on it and i need to try and find one and try and find the model of chair i don't even know who made that i just bought it off the shelf in staples many years ago whereas with this if any of these parts break, you can just go online and search for Aeron arm or Aeron seat pan and you can find the parts available. So even though this obviously costs a huge amount of money, it'll be very easy to keep it going long term by just replacing parts. 
And likewise, it'll hold its value fairly well. So even if I in a few years upgrade to something even better, like the remastered one, I can then probably still sell this and get a reasonable bit of my money back for it. So yeah, it definitely seems really, really good. But of course, it's all well and good looking at a chair like this. It's very different when you sit on it for a long time. So what I'll do is I'll go away for a while, try it out, and I'll come back to my feedback and talk about how it works. Does it help my back? Does it destroy my back? And was it worth the money? So yeah, we'll go away and try it and come back. So I also got a bit curious and popped it open. This wasn't really to actually take it apart or fix it or anything. It was more just to see if I could find an age on it. But it's actually relatively easy to take apart. There's like a cover that clips over this here. And then it just sort of like this cover here and it just sort of sits over that. And it's literally just a case of unclipping it with a spudger, so I just use this little metal spudger here, unclipped around the front and then it pops off. So it's actually relatively easy to take apart. And then here you can see the whole mechanism and it's quite cool, you can see there's, this is like the spring coil it uses for the actual tension. This here is the gear that's used by tension adjustment. So you see when I turn tension adjustment, that gear inside there turns. And this is obviously why it's got such a long thread, it turns this gear here as you turn that. Probably doesn't come across particularly well on camera, but yeah, it's Definitely a pretty complicated mechanism. And also in here you've got this, which is part of the gas cylinder lift mechanism. You've then got the adjustments for the lock. And these are connected over these cables here that come from the like particular lever through here into part of the mechanism. And then when you adjust that thing, it will then move things inside. You can see when I use the tilt lock, you can see this here adjusts. So it's definitely a very complicated mechanism, but it looks really well made. There's a lot of metal in here. so. It definitely seems pretty well made. But as I mentioned, I popped this open to see if I could find an age of it. And I did. On the inside of that top cover, there's a sticker. And that shows that this was actually made way back in March 2001. So that is a really old chair. You know, this is now coming up for 20 years old. It's 19 years old. But genuinely, I mean, it's a little bit annoying because of course it could have been up to 2018 they made this particular version for. So it could have been newer. And then it, but I knew it was old in 2005 because of those thumb turns, so it's definitely old. At least it's not 1994 old, but it is quite old. But to be honest, it seems really good quality. And if it's if it if it's held up that long and it holds up for you know several years for me, I'm more than happy with it. And it's definitely a testament to the build quality that this is actually 10 years older than my old chair. It's twice as old, yet this one that's probably had quite a hard office life is still in significantly better condition. But yeah, that was something quite funny. And yeah, when I was looking at to see how to date it, most people said look for a sticker on the base, and that's not on this, it's clearly come off over the years. And I did find that on the back panel, um, on the back here, on the inside of this, there's like a, one of the sort of like moulded date codes that said the year 2000, but it wasn't until I took this off that I found what looks like, like looks to be a more accurate date of March 2001, because that's newer than the back, because obviously different parts are made over time. So. It's probably a, like maybe a week or a couple of weeks newer than this, given this was probably when this part was made. Unless that's the whole serial number of the whole chair maybe, but yeah. Looks like it's a 2001 model, so definitely very old, but it's definitely held up very well. Okay, so I've got the chair set up and I've been using it for a good few days, and I'm extremely happy with it. It will take a lot of getting used to, but this is so much better than my old one. Now the first thing I noticed immediately when I sat down on it is that it like, when you sit, it kind of bounces. It doesn't just, it, the, the, there's play in the piston, so it's almost like suspension. And that makes such a difference just because when you're working, just that motion up and down, it just dampens it and feels so much more comfortable. I'll sort of talk about the feedback and go through all the adjustments. But the first thing is the, is the recline is absolutely brilliant. It can go back so far, it can go all the way back to like here, I think. You know, I'm having to actually just push to like hold it back and go back miles. Whereas my old chair would maybe go from like here to here, and that was it. So the amount of recline this can do is huge. It's absolutely fantastic. Now that kind of leads on to the adjustments. So on the side here, you can see the two adjustments it's got, which is, oh, cables, um, which is tilt lock at the back and forward tilt at the front. So what I'll do is I'll sort of demonstrate these individually. So. If we turn forward tilt off, just to make it easier to demonstrate, and then there's tilt lock. So this would be the most basic configuration of one of these chairs where you've not got tilt lock and you've not got forward tilt. 
which means the chair will sort of raise up to this angle here and it'll just tilt back indefinitely. You can adjust the tilt tension on the side here so you could loosen it off a lot more and that makes it easier to tilt back or you could tighten it up and make it harder to tilt back but without the tilt lock feature it'll just always tilt back and it'll go back as far as it goes which is all the way back to here. So that's where the tilt lock feature comes in. So with that it's got two positions on this chair. The first one lets you lock it at a maximum tilt. So if I tilt say back to here, bear in mind it can go back even further, if I tilt back to say here, pull this up and then when it sort of stops, wiggle a little bit and then pull it up a little bit more, that's now locked the maximum tilt. So you can see it can go up, it goes up to here normally, but if I tilt back it stops at that point. That's one thing to bear in mind with this, is you can't lock it in a tilted position. You can't stop it so it stays permanently like this. It's more of a limiter, it's not a tilt lock, it's a tilt limiter, so it, it limits how far it tilts back. If I were then to unlock it, to so bear in mind it can go back to here when it's limited, if I unlock that, it goes back all the way again. And you can do that at any position, so if I just wanted it to have the tiniest little tilt from here to say here, I could lock it in position there, and it would now limit there. So you can really quite fine-grained limit it, which is quite cool. The other option is you can pull it up all the way, so you can set the chair totally up, pull it up all the way, and that locks it in an upright position. So there's a little bit of play in it there, but it's basically locked. There's no real tilt or recline function now. So that might be something you would like. I tend to leave that totally off. I just leave the tilt lock off, let it recline, and then I adjust the tension, and we'll talk about that in a second. The next feature is a forward tilt. And this is something that was a thing I wasn't sure if this particular model had, but I'm so glad it's got it, because this makes such a difference. If you look at it like this, it stops here without the, tilt lock, without the forward tilt. It stops at that sort of position. If I undo this, it tilts forward that tiny little bit more. It doesn't feel like much, but it's such a difference. Especially if I'm sitting at my desk. If I'm sitting here, just having that ability just to lean slightly further forward and have it lean with me makes a massive difference. For example, if I was to actually feel right into my desk, careful the microphone cable, if I'm working at my desk, say here, and I just want to lean slightly in, it just kind of comes with me a little bit more, like that, which just is really helpful. And it's things like if I want to just sit and like do that, I just like sit with my hand on my, like my elbow on the desk and just sit and think, the chair comes with me, and you can see actually through the mesh at the back, the back that my back is still supported during this. Whereas if I turn off forward tilt and don't have it, if I were to do the same position, you can see that to get into the exact same position, the chair stopped and now my back is totally floating in the air and isn't supported by the chair at all. So just having that forward tilt there means that if I go in like that, my back can stay supported by the chair, even if I'm leaning slightly forward. And that makes such a difference. So I'm really glad to have the forward tilt. And I would definitely say if you're getting one of these, get the forward tilt because that makes a world of difference for me at least. Next up on the other side you've got the other two adjustments where you've got the, the height adjustment and then the tilt tension adjustment. So the height adjustment is just what you'd expect, it just moves the chair up and down and it feels very responsive but it does drop you quite quickly but it's, it's absolutely fine. And then the key thing here is this tension adjustment. So if I were just to sit back like this which is how I normally have it, it tilts me back a little bit but not too far and if I lean forward to do the forward tilt, like if you imagine there's a desk here, the back does kind of come with me and still support me. And if I lean into the forward tilt as well, it does reasonably come towards me. But if you'd notice when I go fully further forward, it does at this point come off my back. And that's due to this. If I were to tighten this up much tighter, what you'll see is the back will now be a lot tighter. So if I lean back now, it won't lean back as far and it'll almost hold me in a vertical position. And I personally prefer this to using tilt lock. I don't like being locked in an upright position. So if I want to sit properly upright, I'd much rather just tighten this side up and it'll keep me a lot more upright, but I've still got that little bit of bounce that I can still move back. But it's sitting like that and it's now sort of holding me a lot more upright because that's now tighter. And if I now lean forward into the forward tilt, the chair comes with me and supports my back a lot more the more I lean in. So it's still on my back there. So that's definitely something I noticed with this, is that's definitely quite useful to sort of move from being a more upright position to relaxing a bit more. So you can tighten that up miles, like you can tighten up super tightly. So we'll do that now and see what, how, almost how tight it goes. And 
having this on the side is really useful because in my old chair and every other chair I've had, it's always been just underneath at the front and it's always a pain you've got to sort of reach around there to try and do it. And you can, it's then hard to turn it while feeling it. So having it down the side there is a lot more useful. And it clearly shows with this that they're expecting it to be adjusted a lot more. Whereas another chair that's clearly a bit of an afterthought that most people don't even know exist. But it's still not fully tight yet, but now it's that's way tighter than I would ever want it because at this point it's basically permanently sitting in the forward tilt and I'm having to force it back to even sit upright. So you might want this if you're sitting at a desk and you're leaning over slightly, you might want that to be permanently keeping you slightly tilted forward, but you can also lock it in the forward tilt, which is probably easier. But yep, you can go super tight, you can go even tighter than that, or we can loosen it off. Now, the one thing you're witnessing with this is the one gripe with this chair, and that is how fine grained this control is. It takes a good 10 turns before you really feel a noticeable difference and you can literally sit and crank it for minutes and destroy your wrist to try and actually get it properly loosened off. So I've been cranking that for ages there and that's not even back to where I would normally have it. It takes so long to crank this adjustment. Now apparently in the remastered one that's one of the big things have changed. They've fixed this so now you can do it really quickly. You can turn it a couple of turns and you'll notice the difference and apparently the back also follows you a little bit more when you come up in forward tilt without having to have this super tight so that's definitely an improvement over on the remastered one but yeah this is the one the one complaint because it takes a long time i've had to like switch arm there because it's properly destroy, destroying my, my arm um it's it is a little bit annoying because it is something i quite i quite like adjusting to be honest for me it's not too bad because the two sort of adjustments i go between are fairly close together. I've got one adjustment I use if I'm sitting at my desk working, I've got another one I'll turn it down to if I want to relax and tilt back a bit more, and they only maybe take 10-15 seconds to change between, so it's not too bad. But right now I'm going through the full range and it's just, I'm having to crank this for, I mean this is probably over a minute now of just cranking this between two arms, but there we go, that's now finally loosened off all the way. And now you can see, with it loosened off all the way, it doesn't really support my back when I sit upright into forward tilt, it just doesn't come with me. But if I sit back, oh, it goes back super far and hits my desk. It tilts back really far. And that is, to be honest, something quite good. Even though it's a total pain to get to this level, it's quite nice being able to sit and properly have it tilt back like this. Because if I want to sit and relax and watch something, say I'm sitting just watching, watching some videos or I'm just reading something really long, and I want to tilt back, this is a much better way of doing it because at least doing this, even though I'm tilting back, my back is still supported the whole time. Whereas on my old chair, it didn't tilt back nearly this far or as easily. So it was kind of tilt back to maybe here-ish. And the problem is that it wouldn't tilt back far enough. So if I was relaxing or watching something, I'd end up moving forward and just slouching like that, like that. And that would totally destroy my back because it wasn't then supported. So being able to tilt this back really far is actually really good because it means I can tilt back and still be supported. It's just really annoying how many turns this thing takes. I saw some reviews mentioning that and saying, oh, it's improved on the remaster. I didn't realise how many turns this would take. To the extent that I actually was like wondering if I could like, if there was like a, see if there was like a screw in here and I could like attach a drill to it to do it quicker. But yeah, it's, you've just got to do it manually. And there, there have been times I've actually ended up getting off the chair and kneeling down next to it to do it because I find that destroys my wrist a lot less. But yeah. This is the one complaint, is this takes so many turns to adjust, it is ridiculous. But yeah, the adjustments are absolutely brilliant on this. Then for the final adjustment, it's just the lumbar support. So you can see it around here, you've got this little bar, and it moves up and it moves down. So you can move it all the way down to the bottom there, or you can lift it all the way up and have it kind of right up here. Now, I've kind of found the right position, it's just where my back, the middle of my back is sort of there, and that feels totally fine. Now the one thing to bear in mind is if you do want it lower down or you want it higher up, it then doesn't sit flush against your back, you just get the edge of it and it digs in a little bit more. So that's definitely something to bear in mind that you may find that it digs in if you want it a bit higher or a bit lower. But if you get it in the right position sort of on your back really where it should be, it does feel perfectly fine. And you do have those two sides so you can adjust it. Now this is the only comfort thing I've kind of found is that this is very noticeable to me. But what I found, I think it's because I'm going from a chair that's not got really any lumbar support at all and I slouch in it, 
that I'm just not used to it and my back's probably totally knackered from it. So coming to this, I really feel that very pronounced in my back, especially if I'm not sitting properly. If I'm not sitting properly with my back against it, I really feel that dig in. But if I sit properly, it's really comfortable. And what I'm finding is that even though it's maybe not as conventionally comfortable as say a chair that's got super big cushions and foam and that really like hugs your body, with this one, because it properly supports my body, it's fine to sit in. But afterwards, when I get up and walk away from it, I have no back pain. Whereas previously, I would get off my old chair, go and lie on the couch after work, and immediately my back would start hurting. So this support seems so much better and it really does make a big difference. So yeah, that's all the adjustment. You've got your height adjustment, your tension adjustment, your adjustable lumbar support, the arms that can move up and down, and then you've also got the tilt lock and forward tilt on this model. But these are optional when they're ordered new, so it really you need to be careful to work out what you're actually getting with the chair when you order it. One other thing I've found, it's the only real major difficulty I've had with it, is just the casters. Herman Miller offer two different types of casters when you order it new. They do a hard floor one and a carpet one. And it turns out this is the carpeted one. I think the hard floor ones have like rubber or something on them, so these are carpet ones. But it's clearly designed for the sort of hard office style carpet tiles, you know those blue carpet tiles that every office has that are really thin and hard wearing. And they'd probably be absolutely perfect on those. But because I'm using this at home, I've got normal home style carpet, which this carpet isn't particularly thick, it's quite old, it's fairly well trodden. But even this carpet, which just has a little bit of depth to it, these wheels really sink down into it. And when you feel it back, you don't know if you'll see it on camera, but they actually, yeah, you see it there, it's actually like rippling the carpet. Now, that is part of this carpet is a bit rubbish. It's, it's from the previous owners of the flat and it's not very good, but it's not amazing carpet anyway. But it does kind of bunch up sometimes under the wheels and it's a bit inconvenient. And I think it's just because how heavy this chair is. The chair weighs an absolute ton, which is great because it feels really well made, but it does mean that when you're sitting on it, it really beds into the carpet and it does kind of make it a bit hard to move sometimes. I can live with it, but apparently you can get different casters. Not from Herman Miller, but they're just standard, you can just replace them. So there's other companies that make much larger casters that apparently when you put a larger caster on it, they tend to not bed down into the carpet as much. I suppose it spreads over a wider surface area on the floor. So I might look into a few of those because they're not that expensive and that might work a bit better than these default ones. But other than that, it does work fine for me. The only thing I would point out that is probably a bit of a risk for some people is if you do have a very deep pile carpet, is this cylinder in the middle? Because that's the gas cylinder. And on my carpet here, where is it? There. On my carpet here, it's basically like maybe two or three millimeters above the carpet, the bottom of that. And on the bottom of that, there's a metal clip that's clearly holding the cylinder together or something like that. There's a little metal clip sticking out. And for me, it's basically just hovering above the carpet by like a hair. It's really close to the carpet. So I think if you had a chair, had a carpet that was thicker than this, like you had a brand new carpet or just a particularly thick carpet, you may have an issue with this dragging along the carpet. And that metal clip under there is actually quite sharp and you may run the risk of it actually like damaging your carpet over time. So in that sort of case, I would probably either invest in like a chair mat, you can get like a sort of vinyl mat you can put down to sit the chair on it, or look into bigger casters. And I might get some and if I do, I'll make a video about it because that's just one thing I have noticed is that cylinder does stick down really close to the carpet and on this sort of slightly thicker carpet the chair beds down into, that gets really close and could potentially damage it. But overall, that's not necessarily a bad complaint. It's just a sort of gripe with using this on home carpet when it's clearly designed for office carpet. But yeah, that's fairly easy to fix though. So there we go. That's my review of my new chair, which is this refurbished Herman Miller Aeron. And I'm really happy with it. Now, does that mean it's the best chair ever made and it's flawless and it's the most comfortable chair ever? No, but it is still really good. For example, it's not as comfortable as say a nice big foamy executive style chair because it's got all that additional support that does kind of dig in. But what I have noticed is that the lack of back pain I've had after using this is, is, is such a big difference. I was expecting it to take me a while to get used to it, but with this it was almost instantaneous that my back felt better. And just in terms of the overall f functions and build quality, it's fantastic. 
and just that forward tilt is so good and it's something that I didn't really think I would ever notice but that makes such a difference just being able to lean forward slightly especially if I'm like writing something on my desk having the chair support me while I'm doing that is fantastic and yeah I thought I'd make this video just to show, show the chair just show the features especially as someone who's got really no experience with high-end chairs I've just used my old one and like a IKEA one at work so I've not used lots of high-end chairs but I thought I'd give it show my experiences as an average user to say is it worth it and it definitely seems to be so yeah thank you very much for watching if you're interested in buying this I will put a link to this particular listing on second hand in the description it's not affiliate or anything I thought I'd just link it just because this is the particular listing I got but I would just say bear in mind that those lead times I mentioned earlier I got mine quickly but I don't know how quickly everyone will and also just bear in mind that while mine did come with the forward tilt and the back tilt and all the features that gave it's a fully loaded chair there is always a chance that because for example it didn't really mention forward tilt in the description that they might not all come with it so it's worth bearing in mind that your mileage may vary with this I've never really dealt much with this company before so I don't you may have different experiences but at least for me I definitely got a pretty good chair and while, yeah, it was more expensive than I could have probably got it if I'd shopped around on eBay and Gumtree and looked for ages, I needed one now. I needed one I could get delivered, and I wanted one that would give me peace of mind. So if it arrived and it was faulty, I could return it or get it fixed. And for 4 dollars it wasn't too bad, really. It's kind of the going rate for a, refurb a properly refurbished one. So yeah, definitely very happy with it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.